Hi there and welcome to my YouTube channel. In this video we're going to discuss how we can restrict or limit a database so then it only runs in a specific folder. So this can be used for obviously security reasons. Um, as we all know an access database can easily be copied and taken elsewhere. This may be an extra little barrier to people doing that. Don't get me wrong, nothing is foolproof, but these are the extra things we can put in place to try to secure things a bit. The other aspect here is by doing something like this, this can also be used to ensure it's not running in a folder, say on the server. That way no one goes and uses the server and shares a common copy. This may be a way to validate and ensure that people are running this on their local PCs. So this can be used in different manners, but ultimately it's always going to be very similar code to make this happen. And this is all part of a larger question when it comes to security. And that's what I mentioned here at the beginning of my article. It actually all originated from this article in which I was talking about adding password to a database to lock it down, but then mentioning at the very end in my conclusion and whatnot that there are other steps and measures we can take, this being one of them. So how does it all work? As you can see here, I have some code examples. I demonstrate a little bit how it works, but for us today, let's just dive into an actual database rather than reading this article. Um, it's always gonna be the same thing it's going to be this function here that, or something similar, in which we're going to define the folder we want the database to be running in or not, depending on how we want to do this, and then reacting to that. So we're going to compare what we're using as our restriction, our folder, against the current project path, which is the path that the current database resides. So we're going to take that, we're going to compare it against what we want or don't want, and then we act accordingly. Now, in this case, what I'm wanting to do is I'm wanting to ensure that it runs from this folder. I don't want it running from elsewhere. So in that case, I'm going to come and look at the path. And if it doesn't match this path, so that's why we have the inequalities, they don't match up. So you're not running it where I want you to be running it. In that case, we're going to come down and do an application quit and just shut it all down. Now, you'll also see here, I commented out, you can easily be a little polite if you wanted and pop up a message box. If you want to give information to your users, that's a choice, okay? Um, long story short, and you could even be sending yourself an email. You know, this database is automatically fire off an email indicating to you as the administrator that somebody attempted to run this in the wrong location. Uh, and you could gather all sorts of information about that computer if you wanted. The IP address, time of day, username, you know, you, you could go wild here if you are concerned about uh, people taking your work. On the other hand, we could also set it up to ensure that it it is running in the right location or not. And it's going to be uh, more or less flipping this inequality so what we could do is say, this is my server folder. Now, people are supposed to be running this on their computers. Now, you may have left it flexible to them. You can put it where you want. You know, if you want to put it on your desktop, you do that in your documents. You know, the choice is yours. But you don't want them using the server copy ever because then they'll share it and then you end up having other headaches. So if that's the case, what you do is you'd flip this inequality and now you'd say, if the current project is the server version, then exit. I don't want you running this one. You you use the one I gave you, not the one from the server. So that's a, as simple or as complex as it would be to switch that. But typically, this is what we really want. This is typically most of the time what we're gonna do is we're gonna tell it, this is where I want it running from. And if it doesn't equal that location, then exit. Now, how do we implement this Okay, we have a function that's able to check the current path against the path that we want. Now, how do we make the database actually use this and run it? Well, we have two big techniques to do this. We can um, use a form, 
that automatically opens when the database is opened and make that part of its code as soon as the form opens. Or the other approach, the more common approach typically, is to use the auto exec. So an auto exec macro, if you're not already familiar with it, it's literally what it is. It's automatically executed as soon as the database opens. So this will do whatever you tell it to do. In my case, what I'm showing here is I'm doing one thing currently. And what it does is as soon as the database opens and runs this macro, the macro is going to use the run code action. And what is it going to run? It's going to run my function entitled startup. So it's going to run VBA code for me. Now, what is startup? We'll come back here. I create typically a module called auto exec and there you will find a public function called startup. So what the auto exec code is doing is it's going to run this. Now this can be anything you want it to be. As you can see, typically I might validate the current user. So I may check the user of the PC, the username and see if they're even authorized. This would also be the time to check. Is it running in the right folder? Then you might go on to things like relinking the tables, doing a backup, um, doing a compaction. Um, you know, the sky's the limit here. Translation routines, opening certain forms. You get the idea. But one of the very first things before going on to relinking, before going on to authentication and any of that other stuff is check the folder. So we're going to run our function. That's it. So the auto exec macro is going to run this routine, this procedure. This procedure is going to call our function and will validate the folder in which we reside. How does it work? Well, it's very easy. If we do a compact and repair, the auto exec will automatically run. So if we do that, we'll save our changes. Sure. And you'll see everything is glorious. So I'm running in the right folder. Now let's change the right folder. We're just going to take it down one notch. So now I shouldn't be running in the right folder anymore because we've changed that folder path. So now if I recompact, you'll see the database automatically closes. And that's exactly what it takes to make this work. So we'll just reopen this. And that is the complexity of the question at hand. Now, the other approach besides auto exec macro, like I said, is if we had a form, so let's just create a bogus form. Okay. Okay. So this could be my initial form, whatever it might be. This could be a menu, could be a splash screen, could be anything you want, but this is the form that you want to automatically open. So normally you'd come here in your options, current database, and you'd be setting this is the form that launches automatically. So if you know that's going to be the form that's automatically going to get launched, now we could come into it and we could set the event for the open. And here, here, we could come and do a call of our function. And it too would properly secure or validate before continuing. So if we simply rename this for two seconds and we do our compact and repair, now the auto exec won't run because we don't have an auto exec macro. We have an auto exec two and three. Those won't get executed. What's going to happen is this, this form is going to try to launch and open and part of its routine is going to call our procedure that will validate the location. So let's see what happens. As you can see, the form opened and it has run the validation. Now, I set that uh, path back. So let's bring back the wrong path. And if we perform it again, you will see that nothing. Briefly, the form tried to open. The open event caught the fact we were in the wrong folder and automatically closed down the database. So those are the two approaches that you can use for this using a, a default form or using the auto exec macro. The last thing I wanted to discuss, these are, uh, I get hard coded paths. Um, and that isn't always what we're dealing with, right? We may be wanting to set this up that it has to run in the user's documents or the user's 
app data or the user, you know, you pick it, you may want it to be in a, a dynamic location. And you don't want to have to go around hard coding this type of path for your different users, you know, see users Nancy, see users Daniel, see, no, you don't want to get into that. So how can we handle that? It's very easy. Here's an example or two. Uh, let me just bring this up a little bit for you. Okay. Um, two different examples of how we can do that. So the first one would be for document, the documents folder. And the other one would be, let's say we want to use the local app data folder. Okay. So that's one of these uh, system folders. Anyway, um, how we do this is very simple. And what you do is uh, instead of having a constant, right, we're going to switch this over to be a string and we're going to define that at runtime. We're going to use the create object w script shell and we're going to expand a, a, a variable, a system variable called user profile. And then we just tack on whatever subfolders we want. So what is that going to give us? Well, let's just very briefly take a look at what does user profile give us? If you're not familiar with it, user profile in my case will give me C user Daniel. So it was able to identify my current user and give me access to my profile. Now, if we come and instead keep what I had added after the user profile, so then go into the documents folder and we're going to have a sub folder called inventory database. And that's where I want my database to reside. Well, that's how hard it is. You just add that information and now you've got the full folder here that you can then use to validate against. Now, one thing I am noticing amongst other things, I shouldn't have that trailing uh, slash. So let's come here and remove the backslash and there you have it. So you could use this to validate is the user running it from within their documents, within the inventory DB database. Because if they put it anywhere else, right, it doesn't equal, so the current path does not equal this document's inventory DB, well then exit. You have no business running it elsewhere than within your document's inventory database. Similarly, we could use the local app data and tack on that there is going to be a subfolder called inventory DB. And we, that's the, all I did is I changed this variable. So you've got a whole slew of different options. You've got app data, which is one. Uh, let's remove the documents because we're not in documents anymore. There you go. So you'd get the app data roaming inventory DB. Or if you want to use the local app data, there you go. We're in the app data local inventory DB. So as you can see, it's very simple to make this a dynamic. That way you don't have to go around recoding a front end for every single user. You're able to make this very adaptive based on whoever's logging in in your, in your scenario. So there you have it, a couple different ways of handling this. Um, as you can see, it's very straightforward, just a few lines of code to make this all happen. Um, ensure that you're not running off of a server or ensure that you're running out of the proper uh, folder within each user's PC, their profile, their app data, things like that. So, um, yeah, I hope this helps a few of you, uh, you know, lock down things a little bit and avoid, uh, especially avoid users sharing common copies of the front end, um, or also avoid people taking the database home, taking it to other locations where they shouldn't and yeah, lock down, secure things a little bit. Don't forget, nothing is ever foolproof, okay? I'm not saying this is 100% and that you're going to be, uh, you know, safe. There's steps we take. These are all extra layers to make things more difficult. But, you know, if they can do a shift bypass, well, then they can bypass this as well. And that's also another aspect of security that is important with your database is always disable the shift bypass capacity, the property. And we can look at that in a future video. Anyway, I hope this helps a few of you out there and we'll see you in the next video. As always, if you don't mind, like, share, subscribe, drop me some comments below and uh, we will see you in the next video. Take care, everyone.